So for these so far, I usually kind of pick the topic, the GOAT debate, you know, <laughs> the JRPGs and tournament combat, whatever. I talked a little bit about, um, you know, various things, but I thought today it'd be a little bit fun and interesting if I actually sort of told you guys my kind of anime manga origin, but really just why I'm such a fucking nerd. <laughs> I thought it'd be interesting to kind of tell you the journey and path that I got there, because I do think it's a little bit different than average, because I know I constantly hear stories from even people who are kind of my age, 27, speaking about like, yo, when I grew up, anime was lame, people made fun of you for it, I got bullied, and I was cool, and it's mainstream, and things of that nature, and I never went through anything of the sort. I was kind of a bully about anime way before it was like cool to do on Twitter. Like if you we weren't watching One Piece in the, in seventh grade and I knew you liked anime, I would make fun of you. I was a bully. <laughs> I won't lie to you. So I thought it'd be interesting if I can kind of run you through well, what happened. So let's talk about it. I got no time to parlay unless it's big checks or parlays. I've been rich, it's not far away. Like the spliff and I stargaze. Consultation with the constellations. They said the world was in a dark phase. It got me desperado for protection. Carry big strap in a guitar case. So, as long as I can read, I've been reading comics and manga, especially those two. I did not like reading books like Harry Potter and stuff when I was younger. My interesting story about how what really got me into novels it's kind of anime related we'll get to that in a second but yeah the very first anime that i ever seen was ninja science team gatchaman birds go you know <laughs> i don't know if you guys know what that is that's that's even before my time so it's not even like don't don't age me that much i'm not from the 70s like that or it was, yeah late 70s i think if i remember correctly if, if i'll have the thing here but uh yeah so that's kind of where i started with and then um dragon ball i used to wait for my dad to come home from work and we'd watch dragon ball together like the adventures of kid goku so not even like dragon ball z like i started with dragon ball and at the time you have to understand that like we i just thought this shit was cartoons i wasn't really like oh my god this new anime is coming out it's just dragon ball the cartoon is coming out it was kind of like that it wasn't necessarily me being me <clears throat> me being and thinking that uh this was some different thing from japan and because the first anime that i watched knowing this was anime was inuyasha and that's when i knew at the time and then after in hindsight i was able to re recall like oh like pokemon digimon card captor sakura and all of those things were all anime so to speak i mean to me it's all animation but you know if you want to make a distinction to categorize i don't mind we can do that for today cartoons american or i, or I guess uh, anywhere else and then we um you know japan is anime or whatever but yeah so i kind of went through that now with my manga origins you can't really see it here but that this top shelf right here this is all 36 volumes of ranma one half rumiko takahashi was my introduction into like the scale, the, the scale and world of anime and manga and whatnot. I pretty much started with her series. So Ranma, Inuyasha, Maison Ikoku. We had oh, shoot, I'm not forgetting one big one. Oh, um, the one with Lum. Why do I never forget the one with the alien with Lum? Yats Yatsure, whatever. I'll put the name here. But <laughs> like those are what I started with. So I'm a to, to this day I'm a huge fan. And oddly enough, I think the worst thing that I've read from her was Inuyasha. Ranma being my favorite. Because I like to laugh. These, yeah, these, these are more like rom com ish type, type, type of deals, but I like to laugh no matter what. Comedy will always get me. So I like wacky shit. So I loved her. Her, you know, fucking Akane would kick Ranma into the sky and they would have this, uh, this, this symbol here. Shit fell off my ears. But yeah, you know, it was, it was dope. And then from there, that's kind of when I started finding like the subbed anime community. Like obviously there was TV stuff I was watching stuff. One Piece being one of the things that I thought was stupid, mega whack, oddly enough, because of the four kids dub and everything. I thought it was trash until I seen a uh, till I until I, I woke up and I and I and I got into One Piece. But um, yeah, like I really started there with Rumiko Takahashi and whatnot. And Dragon Ball, obviously Dragon Ball Z, the reruns, all that stuff. I don't know if we had. We didn't get Toonami for a while. I don't know if it was called, what it was called, but we used to, yeah, yeah. Dragon Ball Z. I had to come home and watch that. When Goku on Super Sega is Frieza. Woo! Come on, dog. That's it. You can't, you can never replace some of these memories, man. It was really, really good times. 
Now, I started, I learned about like um, reading manga online and whatnot because I was still kind of going to libraries. And I don't, I don't know if you guys still, know, well, they still make these. I don't know if you, I don't know if they still really sell them, sell them, but I usually get the Shonen Jump books from Scholastic Spelling where they would have the, the issues, like the big, the big book with like the Naruto and the, um, is it Hikaru no Go? And then it was like Shaman King. And then it was, you know, a bunch of series in one little booklet. And that's kind of how I, I read it for a while. And then internet, boom, one manga.com. And then it was over for me there. Because then that got introduced to YouTube. Y'all remember, y'all remember watching uh, YouTube three part, you, three star, Naruto episode 84 part one, two, and three. It's like eight minutes each part. Like that was like the era that I came from when they used to actually... This the subs would actually the fan sub that did the, the um the subtitles did actually while I was liked and I miss it for this day is for attacks and transformations they change the text so when you'd hear Sasuke go cotton the the actual font would turn into like flame like font and red and stuff it was it was truly it was truly a good time I know some sub sub groups probably still do it but you gotta have to go out of your way to look for that. Not when we had like Date Bayo subs and all that stuff, man. It was it was truly special. But yeah, I got big into Shonen Jump stuff because obviously I was a Dragon Ball fan, so things of that ilk got me. So Naruto, Bleach, Hunter Hunter, yeah, and I and I when I caught up to Hunter Hunter, it was around the time we about to hit that very first hiatus. Because one thing a lot of people don't know about my experience of Hunter Hunter, it wasn't like y'all. 2011 anime and then you started reading the manga i had to experience each stoppage so that was doubly as frustrating for me and then one day i stopped caring but um yeah i got big into shonen jump and then one piece was kind of the last one of those when i got into and then i it was over from, it was over from there i was hooked i was hooked i thought it was the greatest thing i ever seen i couldn't believe i hated it for so long which was a kind of a running thing with me even even up to kingdom hearts i thought kingdom hearts looked super wack until one day i see my cousin he is fighting some black stuff with a key sword i'm like hold on what's that what's going on i was playing that shit in secret dog and they're like bro I, you know i could see the other save file i beat the game before he did like i was <laughs> that shit was bad for the good times good times man but um yeah like i was just i was into so much shit man i love the gaming stuff like i but like even could take him and reborn when they when they first told me reborn i'm like bro where did this big was this big-headed mafia baby but i'm like no 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 this shit's big whack oh shit that's my phone my fault so um yeah oh good times I, i'm not, i gotta stop saying that but anywho so yeah i just was being a shonen jump and what really kind of set me into that descent of liking just kind of anything or being really open-minded to other stuff was the day that i saw episode two i believe of death note this that's this is the episode where l actually corners kira into this into whatever specific region of japan he was i think it was the kind the kanto region of japan and i'm like yo this is the most well, before we said this but big brain galaxy Ex i said yo this man is different different how could you possibly have done this that was so sick with the fake l ugh, he was on death row i'm like bro and from that episode from that episode two ended and then i went straight to my computer and i read death note and then i realized you know what i can enjoy manga comics graphic novels if you will because remember i'm still reading my superhero comics like crazy my superman my batman my spider-man all that shit i'm still reading all that um and i'm like yo people don't need to get punched every panel for me to enjoy what i'm reading and that's how i got into prince of tennis slam dunk sports Me and then that eventually would translate into mecca and then slice of life romance like that's what opened my mind to those possibilities because death note for me was a big gateway manga anime that i seen because then i understood that i didn't need a constant influx of action and fighting and things of that nature to enjoy what i was what i was reading or watching and then from that day on i kind of became like a guy who could like anything as long as i thought it was good because i got big into romance good ending <clears throat> i'm a huge fan of hetakoi uh, what's the is it tasagare no atome ex atome like the ghost one like like if you see my like top whatever list i'll put it in the description or something i remember <laughs> you can just see kind of i'm, I'm actually have to do one for this year the reason why i didn't do it this year because i didn't really read much except jujutsu kaisen and that didn't crack 
my top 30 i don't think i don't think about that one but like that's how i got into so much stuff right and then, then from there i would just i was just kind of constant um college i would say high school and high school a lot i would read into the night go to go to practice mad tired it's like yo why are you so tired like bro i was watching school days this shit was so fucked i don't know what's going on but i couldn't stop like i like, like, like i was i was there and then i got into visual novels around the time i think by the time i played the first ace attorney game which is the first visual novel that i think i played knowing it was a visual no that's not true i play a lot of rog ones i'm not gonna lie I, i'll come clean i was <laughs> I'm a degenerate so like i was on my like um my bible black i was on i don't remember i really don't remember space pirate sarah was out that, around those times i would have to check the date but i know i i know i i i got into all of that so i was a freak but like ace attorney that made me a huge fan of visual novels got into fate um then eventually that will bleed into Don Rampa, the Zero Escape series and things, all of that. So like, and I was all through all of the same time. And around, around, I want to say maybe 2008, 2010, around that time, I was introduced to something that changed me forever. His name is Nisio Isin. And the very first thing he's ever done that I experienced was not Madaka Box. It was not Monogatari. It was not Zadegoto, Katana Gatari. The, um... The what's the what, what's the detective series called with the with the good looking but the be shown in detective series? Well, none of that. It was a Death Note light novel. Uh, it was called Death Note: Another Note, the Los Angeles BB murder cases. And I was a Death Note fan, and I didn't know who Nisu Isi was yet. But this so this book is just about. I don't know if you guys remember if anyone who's watched it. Do you remember um, Naomi, Ray Penber's wife? whatever the FBI agent that Kira had to kind of trick into getting the name. I think she briefly mentions a case that she worked on with L before. That is that case with Beyond Birthday and it was phenomenal. And I'm like, you know, I was always a pretty, I was always the type of person that did research. I was always that way to this day. I've been a little lazier and I think this is something a lot of people need to start falling in love with and you need to start falling in love with the process the creative teams behind the things you love and kind of look at the behind, like the, the making of. Like, uh, I always hop into Kubo and the Two Strings by Leica Studios is a stop motion animation movie that I thought was phenomenal. Great movie. I actually think how they made that movie is more interesting than the movie itself. So I implore people to do that level of research because a lot of people don't do that. I remember a lot of times being like, oh yeah, man, yo, Kishimoto, this and that and the other. Like, what the fuck was that? Was, what's a Kishimoto? I'm like, you're a Naruto fan. What the fuck is wrong with you, right? Like, like do some. Reason? You don't even know who makes the manga, bro. Like, do better. Damn, I went on the tangent. What was I talking about? Death Note, Illinois, right? So I type in Isio Ishin. I see, oh, what's this Madaka box thing? Big fan immediately. My favorite manga character is Nazayoka, aka Kujiro Kurokami, and that's Madaka's sister from Madaka Box. Love that character. My been my favorite manga character since that day. She actually ended up taking Nabiki Tendo's um spot from uh Ranma, which was one of my favorite she's still one of my favorite characters of all time. She just bought that paper and I respect it. I'll never never knock the hustle. Get your get your money, Queen. But yeah. And then from there I became the biggest Nisio Ishin stand you can possibly think of. Now I didn't get into Monogatari until probably two thousand and eleven and twelve, but like that man's writing to me to this day he is my favorite writer and it's not even close and to think about this i'm not even really experiencing his writing he's he's very he's mastered the japanese language to such a degree that it's like no matter who's translating what we're reading from him we're losing so much in translation i think he's a brilliant i think he's one of the most brilliant writers i've ever i've ever seen he's my favorite i i, I do think he could just some guys who could contest with him but damn it that man was different and that's kind of like you know where it is and then after you see me today like i i have so much you know my my palette is pretty diverse i've experienced all kinds of anime from different era the manga from different era different places and all that stuff and that's kind of how i got to where i was but nisu ishin was big for me because then that made me a huge light novel fan and that's how i got into the index series which is also on my shelf um I became a huge fan of Toma and um, Misaka Mikasa. No wait, Misaka Miko Mikasa Mikoto. I think. Uh, Jesus Christ, I'm missing. Look, I know, I I know uh, one is from 
Attack on Titan, the other one is, from, is, my, is my Electric Princess. And then I became a huge fan of light novels, so now I read a lot of light novels as well. And then around that time, I would think now I want to kind of go to, to my, well, my college days. Right, so when I had free time, I, I was probably playing some type of RP, Persona 3 or something. But I remember one, uh, there's one point I'm like, yo, I need to watch a lot of anime with really good female cast and lead and stuff. And I, and I just kind of transitioned to that. And then the rest is pretty much history. You see where I am today and stuff. I mean, but I, I thought my journey was interesting just because I know a lot of people got made fun of it, but I was always very open about my love for. You know, people used to call me Clark Kent, Superman, you know, all kinds of shit. Uh, actually, a lot of my goal celebrations, if I did one, I wasn't one to celebrate goals that much when I got one, but I would hit a gear two pose. I'd hit it. Get in my stands. I'd hit that pose. If I was playing pickup with somebody, you know, it's like, all right, game point, win by two, and I'm getting serious, I'd be like, Bon, Kai. <laughs> I start moving, right? Like, I always wore it on my sleeve. I was never ashamed. And I never understood why some people would hide it or whatever. I'd have shirts. I I would have I would have the if we had warm up music. I would have fighting dreamers blasting. And I'm in the layup line. We are fighting dreamers. Yo, I was going crazy. Like I I don't know. Like for me, it was never something to be ashamed of to hide. But I also understand that I was I was also an athlete. I'm big. I was. Not, I don't think I was intimidating, but, like, I hit you. See some dumb shit to me, like, oh, like, that hentai shit? I'll just slap you in the face. Who the fuck are you talking to, right? Don't talk to me like that. I, you, you know who I am? Like, I ain't I ain't some I ain't some nobody or whatever. Be but, like, it, it was cool with, with me, too, because that's part of the reason I can get along with anybody. You see me, you, and you see me look at me, and I understand. Look, listen, let's just be real. I understand. I look a certain way. You, you're not going to expect me to be this much of a nerd sometimes. I totally get it. But a lot of times, like, I'd be in class on my BBM or something, and I'm reading Bleach or something on the computer. Like, oh, you like, you like anime? You like manga? I'm like, yeah, what's up? And this is like, this is like the music kid who's like five foot four, you know, braces, uncool, or at least un conventionally uncool. And I'm talking to them. I'm talking to anybody. Like, yo. And people are like, yo. I always find it weird how you can talk to anybody about anything. I'm like, yo, I'm not, I'm not a monster. Like, <laughs> I'm not like, I'm, I, as long as you're respectful and you're cool, you're not a dweeb, whatever. Like, not dweeb, it's like I'm a dweeb, but like, not like just not like weird, weird, weird. Bro, we could talk about whatever. It's nothing to me. Just because I play sports and you go and you do music and drama does not mean we don't have common interest. And I think that was, it's always been fun, it's always been interesting. But yeah. Oh, I, I, I gotta tell you about the Reborn stuff too, because this is, this is, this was, this was big for me. Because I always say, like, Reborn is probably not one of the best series i've ever read or whatever but i have so much love for the experience that i had with reborn from the one manga.com days and then when that when that site went down a lot of us got together and made this zeta board called katekyo hitman reboard where we would theorize and do things i got i actually got the entire skybe set no who has my vario one i gotta get that back i'm gonna show you guys in the side i'm gonna show you guys hold on hold on this shit is Dusty as all hell. I have not opened this box in quite a minute. But all right, so I don't have my Varia one with me on me really. Um, but like, there's this one. I don't, oh, damn it! Let's see if I can. I don't know if you can see this clearly, but this is like one of the original ones from the sky, or whatever. Then, kind of the future version one when they kind of unlock it. I don't know if you remember if I think like one of the Byakuridan arc or whatever. And then I have here the Vongola gear. This I actually used to wear sometimes because I always thought it was cool. Um, how Suna, he would like have it on the on the middle finger, but this would like go to the, you know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was dummy clean. You feel me? Like you see it, right? Like so Reborns was, will always have such a special place in my heart for the experience they have with it. Even though I don't think it's actually anything crazy, crazy. But I had to tell you that part because it plays such a big part of my love and overall love for anime and whatnot and everything. Now, I know I be hating on a lot of new stuff and I'm not really as impressed or everything. But you have to, see, you have to understand that I've seen a lot and I, it's not like I... Like a lot of people who are, who are even like 20, anywhere like 25, they might have just gotten to anime recently. Understand that I have been here since the day I could like understand words, speak, and read. I have been doing this for a long time. And I like stuff from all over the world. I don't just like anime and manga, so. 
Yeah, that's kind of the origin story. I feel like I probably forgot something, and I think I may have told this somewhat on stream. I'm gonna just flex my ring a little bit, you know, and say, yeah, what well, I'm put on, put them all on, get my dying will flame going. Yes, sir. But anywho, thank you guys for listening. This was just for for fun. I thought someone asked, someone kind of asked me how I got into it and stuff, and I wanted to tell the story just because I know like I know a lot of people got bullied for it. I'm I'm happy that it's not like that so much anymore. It seems to be a pretty something that a lot of people are cool with, even celebrities and whatnot. But like, you know what I should tell you about too, real quick, my Ghibli journey. I always I like anime movies a lot because I grew up on like um, Kiki's Delivery Service and movies of that na movies of that um, nature. You know, like uh, Hayao Miyazaki movies and stuff. Because for me, they were always like the Japanese equivalent of Disney. So as much as I love to watch a Mulan and a Hercules, boom. Switch over here, and now I'm watching Kiki's Delivery Service and um, Howl's Moving Castle, and that was a big part of my life, and that's why to this day, there's usually a part of the year where I just look up very recent anime films that came out, and I just pick and choose, and I watch them from Sword of the Stranger and stuff like that, like um, Red Line, Panama Inverted, like I love anime movies especially because the production and quality of them are so much higher due to the pre-production schedule on top of it having like a set running time it's not something they usually have to consistently keep doing week by week and stuff so it's just like you know it's gonna be a minute 30 and then it's the quality is just so much higher like Makoto Shinkai Comics Way Films Blue when I watched the Garden of Words and I seen the rain dropping bro I was like, what's going on? Is this real? The rain is going crazy, bro. Like, it's... Ah, oh, man. That's just a good times, Really and truly. But, yeah. Anyways. Thanks for listening. I don't even know if anyone's going to watch it. I don't even know. If you got this far, I appreciate it. Share with me um, your manga origin. If anything, share with me your first anime and first manga that you ever got into. Thank you, all I'm going to be out. Yer. Tears are falling, my heart is froze Can't talk to me, but I can't